Really? Another box? It was here when I got here, I swear. Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, I think you're right. Hello, David Zeritsky for The Bond Experience. Welcome back. Well, you could tell from that opening, we have something a bit special today. First of all, I'd like to reintroduce my wife, Danielle. Hello. There she is. You may know her better as 009 from the Aston Martin video, but um, I've asked Danielle to sit with me today to talk about a, a pretty serious subject. Um, there is a collector's mentality out there. I mean, you either have this collector's mentality or not, and there's a lot of there's a lot of aspects of collecting that is rooted in behavioral science. So just a quick little read, and these are observations from scientists. So why do we collect? People need, not everyone, but we do, a tangible symbol or manifestation of their love for something that isn't real. It has no shape or form in actuality. It is a very human experience to need to touch and to feel and see a thing in order to have meaning. Otherwise, it's just an abstraction which is why things that are abstract get kind of a symbol. And when you think about it, collecting things, whether it's statues or James Bond goodies or props or clothing, is a symbol of our appreciation of James Bond. We talked about it as an invisible hobby. So I decided to ask a very popular board, um, AJB, where a lot of these like-minded collectors uh, congregate to say, hey, listen, do you do you ever have um, a technique on telling your spouse about acquiring a new piece or item? Um, <laughs> if it's not even telling them, do you have a technique to hide it? And um, so I figured I would read some of the responses and get your reaction. Um, now, now, first of all, we should talk about um, how's our relationship as far as sharing what I collect? I mean, you're sitting amongst it right now. Well, you've been doing it for so long now that, yep. um, you know, it's really just a part of our lives. It's not really something to take much notice to. Um, you kind of have your own separate account for doing these sorts of things. PayPal, and yeah. Yeah, I mean, he, you, you fund, yeah. you know, your own collection. Nothing's taken away from the family. So sure. it's your own thing, yeah. you know. Yeah, I, don't, I mean, I, I don't know if people believe this or not, but you do not flip out with this hobby i mean not at all i think you've been pretty patient it's taken us a little bit around the world met friends oh, sure. etc we've met unbelievably great people yeah been to some beautiful places attended amazing events yep. so yeah can't really complain and one thing that you should know too um much smarter than me she keeps the books so as far as expenditures are concerned uh you know you would see that there would be a blip on the radar there definitely would be yes yeah yeah so <laughs> So let's get that out of the way, um, because I mean, I think some people could see this as, oh, is this going to be a vlog about deceit? Well, let's let's take a look. So um, here's the first person. Um, so I asked the, this question, discuss the approach or technique of what to say or not to say when a significant other asks you about a new delivery or piece, or how do you subtly introduce a piece into your home uh, without any discussion? Feel free to note any outcomes or results. All right, here's the first one. And this person said, I would just wear it if it's a clothing item. And if she notices and asks me about it, then I let her know. Of course, I don't have a significant other, <laughs> but uh, she is my mom. Uh, I think if you made a, uh, a video of the same nature with your Quantum of Solace Tom Ford Talamone kit, it would be interesting. Okay, so this person says they just wear it and if they notice. What do you think about that technique? Don't, don't say anything proactively, in other words. Well, yeah, I mean, if it's a piece of clothing, look, we all need to wear clothes. So unless it's, mm -hmm. you know, like a $5,000 suit, oh. you might need to talk to a significant other about that. But, um, no, I mean, regular clothing item, yeah, I mean, just wear yeah. it and just like you would any other shirt. I don't wear a pair of pants. It's been yeah, interesting. That's know. a conversation with you when you see all these jackets kind of showing up. You're like... You do have a lot of jackets. Yeah. <laughs> but, but I think you said to me over time, it's like, you know what? Great, but I just hope you wear them. Right. I hope you use them. That is the biggest point is wear it, use it, enjoy it. Exactly. Okay, here's another person. I would say throw it in your closet and then over a series of weeks, gradually wear it layered with other clothes, slowly revealing it little by little. Her mind will subconsciously remember seeing it in glimpses and it's doubtful she'll call you out on it at all. <laughs> That's a very cute response, but I don't know. I don't understand why you need to be so... Uh, subterfuge. No yeah, subterfuge. It's, 
not yeah. necessary. Again, um, so this person has the 48 hour rule, kid you not. If you leave a new purchase in plain view for 48 hours and she makes no notice of it, you can then make up whatever story you want about how you obtained it when it's finally noticed. <laughs> what do you think? Well, women, um, I would say, are very observant, so if it's out for a minute, she's going to see it. <laughs> if she doesn't say anything, that means she's, she either doesn't care or doesn't want to talk about yeah. it, I suppose. Women are, um, they always find out. Yeah. They, 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 and they should. Yeah. <laughs> um, keep the prop um, or clothing, if possible, in the box until uh, they get the project ready and the proper showcase or presentation that meets the correct wife acceptance factor. This person has a wife acceptance factor, so they collect props, obviously, mm. and they said um, as long as they put it in a nice display thing, there's a wife acceptance factor. So then they tell them about it. Mm. Okay. Yeah, it's possible. Another, another technique. Yeah. Um, oh, okay, here we go. Now we're going to get into it. Moink. Of course, sometimes you just need to employ some bond -esque style covert operations. It's not lying or deceit. Hmm. It's what I call willful participation in a campaign of misinformation. Oh, boy. And they give an example. <laughs> Quite recently, I undertook such a mission to procure my new watch. Uh, this person, this person's wife, had an appointment and I encouraged her to do a bit of shopping while in town. Three minutes after she left, I set off to the jewelers with a window of three hours max, went to the same town center as her, got in a collected package, got out clean, and made it home with enough time to get lunch ready, uh, all with our three-year-old boy in tow. My wife arrived 30 minutes later under the impression we had just had a quiet morning. I was, of course, wearing the new watch. Uh, fortunately, my wife is as much a clothes horse as me, so clothes are no problem except jackets and chukka boots. So that was like uh, willful participation in a campaign of misinformation. What do you think? I, I don't understand the lengths that people feel they need to go to uh, <laughs> for any of this. It's, it's kind of, I mean, it's, it's humorous and sad at the same time. Yeah. You know, if you have um, a good relationship, uh, you feel you want to talk about something, go ahead and talk about yeah. it. But yeah, to have to, <laughs> so cloak and dagger. I I <laughs> so, so the next one is, um, it, this entry is interesting. So it's all about um, parlaying this as an investment. So ah. th this person says, for Aston's David, I go with the investment. So my first um, V8, it was one year old and I saved 30,000 30, pounds on list bargain. My next DBS in Casino Royale Gray, Poor wow. guy. Low miles and getting to the bottom of the depreciation curve can only go up in value. A bargain. Made a load of money in actual fact. So the next V8, this is the third for those keeping track at home, Aston's always make you money. Bargain. And now a final <laughs> model. This person got a final model DBS in quantum uh, silver, obviously going to appreciate it in value. Fingers crossed. Man, math at its best. So the whole idea of parlaying this as an investment. Sometimes that can't happen, sure. Yeah. Um, these items can go up in price, particularly if they're rare. So I suppose what you could always do to help offset the price of something, obviously not an Aston Martin, but something less expensive, you can buy two of whatever that item is, hold on to it for a few months, wait for the price to go up, and sell the second one at a profit. Why not? Yeah. Why not? Yeah, sure. and some people will do that. I mean, some people will, will buy doubles or triples of things as an investment to help pay for, you know, some of what they do. And Absolutely. It's a technique. Um, okay, here we go. Totally different to the rescue. I am really surprised to see all the sneaky ways of introducing new items to your wife, girlfriend, etc. I never had any trouble with this. Of course I get the question, what's the bond connection with this pair of shoes once in a while? <laughs> but we both, I didn't write this, but we both make our own money split the bills 50-50, and have some disposable income to spend. So when I want a new bass guitar, I buy it. When my girlfriend wants to have a weekend away with her friends or a new dress, she can do whatever she wants. As long as we can make ends meet, enjoy the time together we have together, and are able to have at least four weeks of holiday abroad, wow. Um, I think that feeling bad or getting hell about a purchase means that you spent money that you can't really use on luxury items. Absolutely, I think that that's mm. a very, very good response. Never ever buy anything that you just don't have the money for. That only creates problems yeah. all around, everywhere, for everybody. Agreed. All mm -hmm. right, here we go. When I first bought the Tom Ford Skyfall um, suit, my wife said, wow, that's very nice. When did you get that? I replied, oh, I just bought it. It was a great deal, slapping myself on the head later, thinking I should have never mentioned anything in regards to price. To which she asked, uh, who makes it? Mm -hmm. I replied, Tom Ford. She asked, isn't that expensive stuff? Now, me normally, 
her to, to a, asks her how much it was me 1100 then came to look like i was a witch during the salem witch hunts <laughs> good times surprisingly better than when i spent four thousand on a watch so per, yeah. but the person came right out and said it they did and i think sometimes if you try to over explain something um it's almost like an admission of guilt that maybe you should or shouldn't even be feeling so just keep it simple yeah <laughs> So here we go back to clandestine methods. Oh boy. Well, my clandestine methods are very much needed. My wife is the consummate planner. As much as we do earn our own money, my wife plans the hell out of it. All our bills are paid, but any spare cash would quickly be allowed somewhere else for some reason I have little interest in. We both work long hours, and due to child commitments and time constraints, we don't get much chance for meals out or heavy spending on drink or hobbies, so I justify my watches or Bond-inspired clothing to myself along the lines of, it's my interest and it's my hobby. What helps is that my watch collection has needed very little extra fi finance from within itself. It's been largely self-contained. Mm. It used to consist of an old SM300 that was my grandfather's, a Brazenera, etc., etc., if she knew how much I spent on sunglasses, she'd go nuts. She balked at 70, 70 pounds for some Ted Baker ones I bought her, so she definitely wouldn't understand the 2,000 odd I've got in Tom Ford and Purcell Sunnies. Uh, she completely gets I needed another bloody shawl cardigan that I bought some bloke in Yarm for a bargain price of 40 pounds. Okay, so, I mean, so are the sunglasses being funded it sounds like it. Yeah. It sounds like maybe this person's selling it and funding it and Yeah, I mean then then you're just recycling basically your right. own money. So that's Yeah. And and by the way, I don't I don't know if it's clandestine to not run up to your spouse and go, "Hey, guess what? I paid $2,000 for this." If they ask, great. I mean, you obviously don't want to lie and, and have deceit, but I don't think I run up to you and go, "The price on this was this. I received it from the I mean, do I? And and I wouldn't expect you to. It's Again, I mean, you're just like this gentleman was doing. He was kind of self-funding it through selling watches and things. So you're self-funding your hobby. It doesn't touch, uh, you know, the, like I said, family money. So yeah, um, I don't care what you're spending on it. Okay. <laughs> it's uh, yours to do. So get ready for this bomb. Because, you know, there's all types. I think if you fell it. I think a, th a few of you fellows need to grow some balls. Mm. It's no one's business other than mine how much I've paid for stuff, and it's bloody rude of them to ask. And if they do, don't tell them or play it down. I've never dreamed of asking someone how much they paid for an item. It's unbelievably rude and crass. Uh, by the way, of note, this person uh, doesn't have a girlfriend or a Right, wife. I was going to say, um, oh. <laughs> obviously not in a relationship. <laughs> no. It's not rude or crass if you're asking your significant other the cost of something you have to share the finances you yeah. are you know it's kind of important to know yeah and then a good foundation for any relation note to you who wrote this um here we go uh i think my initial thought is if you need to hide something or lie to your significant other about a recent purchase what does that tell you in the right. bigger picture seems like a rather distrustful way of doing things to me absolutely yeah I, I, absolutely I, I, I yeah there's a deeper problem within that relationship yep yeah. Here's the next one. So, so by the way, it was interesting to watch this thread because it, you know, people were really kind of emotional either one way or another on this. Signs of a good character lying to one's best friend, i.e. the wife. If you can lie to her, you can lie to anyone. Mm -hmm. I was always told you can catch a thief, but not always a liar. My wife never asked about bond stuff that I bought that I brought into my house, but if she did, I tell her straight. So far in this list, it only seems that there are about three honest people. Wow. Yeah, no, lying is insidious. It's not really something you want to uh, to do, particularly it, if you're in a relationship. It's a betrayal. Absolutely. Is what it is. Okay, all depends on the wife, this person says. Mm -hmm. I find that as long as I get my wife something, as long <laughs> as she thinks <laughs> it's of the same value, Kobe, uh, and our son doesn't need anything at the moment, my purchases go unjudged for the most part. For example, I buy a jacket from Tom Ford or Matchless or, or one of those companies. Uh, we go to J.C. Penney's or something like that and get her a couple of things. I don't know oh, if that's equal. That's not equal. <laughs> as long as she's happy with her new stuff, my purchase has been forgotten just so long as she doesn't know the actual price. It's a bargain. Tom Ford, J.C. Penney's. Yeah, I mean, you know, again, it's another technique, I suppose, but. Uh... Wow, they'll end up with a lot of stuff if it's, 
<laughs> his and hers constantly. Wow. <laughs> okay, now we're back. We're back to uh, fun stuff. Ahem. This person actually writes ahem. I love that. Let me give you my two cents. I am married for 17 years and learnt my lessons. If I can, I hide everything from her until she finds out. Mm. I hide 007 purchases, watch purchases, cameras, trainers, everything. It's not that she demands more spending for herself. It's just the fact that I, we spend so much money in her eyes on unnecessary crap. I remember well when I purchased my first digital camera. I tried to hide it from her, but had to put it away when she entered the room. Unfortunately, she saw the cable and followed that back to the camera. <laughs> I love that. Oh my gosh. And the day and the day that I told her I spent uh, 550 euro for a carbon fiber frame around my shifter was a very bad one for me, and still is. Hmm. What do you think? Well, I guess he feels yeah. If if she doesn't see it, it doesn't exist, so she won't be upset. Yeah. So ignorance and not knowing. You yeah. Know, that whole thing. Exactly. A little oh. bliss and a little awful um, when you follow the cord back to the camera. Funny. Um, <laughs> This is interesting, and, and I think there's some truth in this. A lot of it comes down to perceived value for money. Mm. I've said before, many people spend thousands on golf clubs and memberships or following their football team. Sure. My wife just wouldn't get why a watch should cost three, four, five thousand pounds to her. It's just a watch. She doesn't value her Amigas as luxury watches, but she does see value in her shoes and face creams above my purchases. Mm. That's interesting. Yeah, I think it's just, I think then it's just educating the other person in that way, you know, yeah. just say, you know, things hold intrinsic value to whoever is the holder of that item. So That's right. sometimes it just won't translate. Right. Um, and you just have to <laughs> learn to deal with it, I suppose. It, exactly. Um, this is for short but hysterical. Lately, I've been catching the missus sneaking close into the house in some kind of revenge. Her excuses are worse than mine. <laughs> Payback. <laughs> um, I guess I'm in the minor minority. I tell my wife about everything. I get to share in my excitement. While I know she's not as excited as I, she enjoys the fact that it makes me happy. Mm -hmm. She has never questioned any 007 item I purchase. In fact, she just bought me the Magnolia Mr. White Jacket. So not only is she stunningly beautiful, she's also incredibly amazing. Uh, feel free to use my real name. <laughs> a lot of people didn't want to use the real name. This is uh, James Bowman. So uh, he's, and, and I've seen James and his uh, Instagram thread. And yeah, he and his wife are like lockstep with this whole collection. It's kind of nice. Yeah, I mean. That's the way to do it, right? That to me sounds like a really solid relationship and they're doing it right. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, here's a long one, but I think a good one. Uh, I think a lot of our behavior is due to the type of woman we are with. Maybe you too. For my part, it's purely domestic expediency. I'm not prepared to justify myself for buying something I want and value to my wife when I know she simply doesn't get the value, and that goes both ways. My wife has a collection of beautiful and expensive gowns with matching shoes and accessories, and each one has never been worn twice. Uh, twice. Uh, we attend different occasions. And I know this makes her happy, but she's the kind who would find a use for my expendable income if I didn't. Uh, so it's also worth pointing out that she trusts me, but she knows I'd never buy something on her credit or spend money that was needed elsewhere. Hard to argue that. I mean, yeah. I, I get it. Um, look, we're not saying that this also should be a confessional moment. I don't know if it's like the box shows up and it's like, let me tell you the contents. And well, and that takes all the fun out of it. What's the point? And look, you collect because it's, you get enjoyment out of it. Why else would you do it? Right? So if you have to hide or justify or get nervous every time a package shows up, w there's no more enjoyment with it. And so what's the point? Yeah. You it's gotta true. find that balance. So this is for you, a lot of you that have uh, new girlfriends, especially out there, maybe you know, new spouse. I normally just say I'm looking at getting this because it's bond related, and it's normally followed up by "You're crazy," and <laughs> "What now?" and an eye roll. Uh, then I get it anyway. She thinks my obsession with bond and bond related items is silly. However, she knows how much I enjoyed them, so she doesn't put up a fight. Okay. Hmm? That's that. that so tends she's, to she's speaking her mind, but. You know, is, is being quasi-supportive, I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> um, Which is okay. People are allowed to have opinions. You know, that's... I think that's okay. I think it's very okay. <laughs> All right, here we go. When Well, when the uh, Tom Ford Harrington jacket project came around, I had quit my job 
and from my last income bought the Quantum of Solace jacket. Let's say my girlfriend appeared not amused. I just could not pass on this project. When the delivery came around, my girlfriend told me she noticed we had a little trouble with the minimum number, and if I hadn't, she would have ordered one for me, if only to shut me up about the jacket. Um, I always discuss any large purchases in advance, my motivation for the purchase, what it is, and what I'm roughly prepared to pay for it. However, oh. this is mutual. When she goes shopping, I know what to expect. Okay. So that works for their relationship. They need to over-explain everything to each other. It, exactly. That's great. If it works for them. This is a lovely one. Um, a man who has to justify his purchases to his woman is a joke. Hmm. Wack, wack, wack. Must be bliss in that household. Yeah. <laughs> um, if, of course, you simply don't care what your partner thinks of your purchase, you enjoy that it's my money, my business, and I'll do what I want. I don't care about your opinion. And you get away with that when well done and lucky you. But you found yourself a Stepford wife or possibly someone from a house with a controlling father. But beware, women's hormones can be deceptive. And your money, your business may well end up being cited as unreasonable behavior on the divorce petition. Wow. Yeah, that, did, that did not end well for them. Apparently. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> My gosh. <laughs> this one, I think, would be a little tougher to find. I mean, you tell me. Um, I think the simplest and most concise way to say it is simply this. Find someone who shares your passion in collecting mon items. Mm. Find someone who shares the fact that you have passion in something. That's that's two different things. Mm. I don't pretend to have even the slightest knowledge. Um, oh, this is about us. I don't pretend to have even the slightest knowledge of David's relationship dynamic with his wife. But from all the videos he's posted, I've come away with the impression that his wife um, not only tolerates his passion, um, but often shares it with some of their travels and journeys. That's a recipe for success and longevity in the relationship, in my opinion. That was a nice observation. Yeah, yeah, and and we do. We enjoy the traveling look. I mean, Bond goes to exotic, gorgeous locations. Who wouldn't want to go, whether you're into Bond or not? Yeah, that's you true. You know, it's, it's, yeah. I also, this person says, I also agree. And let's be honest, there are a lot of us male Bond fans manifesting part of our fandom through clothes and generally nice high-end possessions, while which entails shopping. How many women don't like clothes shopping? In fact, being a Bond fan is a pretty harmless hobby when it comes to relationships. In fact, um, this has become enduring. Uh, my wife doesn't know it, but the leather briefcase of mine she stole for work because she loves it was only ever bought because Daniel Craig has one and our wedding pictures uh, <laughs> that she cherishes were taken on the Bond-inspired Sony Cybershot camera. We even got married in Venice because our love for the place, which came from me taking her there because I felt compelled to go there, after seeing James Bond. Right. And like we've said before, beautiful clothing, beautiful locations, quality, quality, luxury. Who doesn't love it? Exactly. It translates to everybody. Um, absolutely anyone with a partner knows the games that we humans play. It's all part of life's rich tapestry and each uh, has to judge any situation dispassionately or how they see fit. We don't always get it right and get it bad wrongly and could be terminal for our relationship, and some take it to the wire intensely or not. Mm. Well, if something's done poorly, then you must apologize. <laughs> that yeah. goes a long way. Yep, ex exactly. Um, okay, the topic begs the question, what is a bond purchase? Probably the lawyer and me coming out, <laughs> which doesn't help as Mrs. is also as well. So uh -huh. two lawyers. When I got an Omega a limited edition, I couldn't think I could afford it. Couldn't. <laughs> Sorry. Ooh, so true. <laughs> couldn't really argue. I wanted a new watch, um, but there are gray areas. It seems uh, regarding um, items as Craig items, I've been wearing them for decades. My black pair wearing out. So I didn't regard them as a bond, but in contrast, I bought two pairs. I'm, I'm just getting right to the point. I regard my Anthony Sinclair suits as work gear. So exempt from being a bomb extravagant, as do many of these things. Not logical, I grant you, but finally, um, my wife is business-minded, I'm not. Pretty much aware of all bond purchases, I recall a bit of pushback on the John Varvatos jacket on the basis of practicality of goat suede. Hmm. 
So that, that was kind of all over the place a little bit, but justification. Um, but th he does bring up an interesting thing. There are some bond items or kit that just are impractical. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's hard to say, yeah, yeah. this is justified. I, I would weatherproof that goat suede. Would yeah. Probably a good that's idea. <laughs> sitting kind of almost behind you. Yeah. And it's that blue one Don't right there. wear it in the rain. Don't wear or it in the rain at all. Or you could just put it in a, on a mannequin and it could just look pretty. Exactly. <laughs> um, all right. So here we go. Um, last bit of piece of this is that obviously um, different collectors mind, different ways to approach the spouse, the significant other. Um, what do you think the best policy overall? You've heard so many different versions of this. Mm. Well, I think, you know, look, you know your significant other best. Mm -hmm. So you would know <clears throat> the best way to approach things, obviously. Um, honesty always the best policy never spend money that you don't have that's a big one um and you know i don't know it's tough i yeah. mean it, some people get collecting and some people don't and i can i understand yep. that um but i think when it comes right down to it if it makes the other person happy yeah you and can't it's argue that harming. that's true you can't argue that it's funny too because i think um not so much early on in my collection but you remember when i was starting to get um you know pieces from uh, pieces from Skyfall, like like the Swarovski crystal, and mm. and even Vesper's, you know, um, not love knot, right. and things like that. Thinking, oh, you know, I'll get her into the collecting and things like that. But I, I don't think you needed it nor wanted no. the things. No, because you knew it was my my kind of deal. I think one major collector in the household's enough. So <laughs> <laughs> yes, I leave that up to you. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Dresses, jewelry, things like that. If I'm going to put in my collection, it should go right to my collection, right. not through you as a filter. Right, right. Yeah. I mean, because look, it might not be my taste. It's true. Yeah. Well, listen, with that, you've got a little bit of input to make hopefully good decisions. If you want to still make those other decisions, life's all about choices. So um, I want to thank you, honey. Oh, of course. It was great. It was fun. It wasn't too bad, right? No. Oh. <laughs> That's a good thing. Uh, this has been David Zaritsky and Danielle Zaritsky for The Bond Experience, and we'll see you very soon. Take care. Oh, hey, you're still here. Hi, didn't even know. Uh, you listen, while you're here, uh, if you want, I, I, so I would actually go to this button right here and click on it because then you actually subscribe to our vlogs. It's amazing. Um, you get to see all the upcoming stuff first. You get notifications. It screams at you while you're at work. It's absolutely amazing. Just click on this button, hit subscribe. Just move your cursor, move, 